Greetings everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the latest version of Kali Linux to be released. This is Kali version 2021.2 and uh, this came out uh, Tuesday of this week here in the first week of, what are we in? May, June. We're in June, how about that? That's right. Um, and got a bit of a few interesting updates to the system. I just want to kind of highlight some of the stuff and then show you one of the things that I thought was actually really cool and is probably going to replace, at least I'm going to work with it for a while and see if it's going to replace one of my um, venerable and used, most used tools, which is GoBuster. And uh, we've got a new one to see what we can do with that. So let's take a look. I've got Kali Linux, the latest version installed and up and running and I'm on their website. Let's go check that out. Here we are. I'm actually in their blog, which talks about the release, and that's found at uh, kali.org forward slash blog sort forward slash kali dash Linux dash 2021 dash two dash release. Man, URLs are fun, aren't they? They just make it so easy. It's like rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Like like butter. No, I'll make sure to throw that link in the um, in the description for you good folks out there. So you can find this really simply, but this is really, we're just going to kind of hit some of the highlights. Like I said, of some of the new stuff we're finding in uh, Kali Linux new release right there, 2021.2 and uh, some really interesting stuff. I think some things that you'll probably really like. Uh, this is the first one, which is the release of Kaboxer. And, uh, this is kind of a, a laundry list of the things that they've done. So let's kind of go over it really quickly and then we'll jump down to a little bit more detail. And again, just hit the highlights. Uh, Kaboxer is um, an applications boxer and it's version one. Uh, applications in containers, really neat stuff there. Some Kali tweaks, make it easier to configure Kali to your taste. We like that. Refresh bleeding edge branch or refreshed bleeding edge branch. That is a tongue twister. Uh, they did a complete makeover for our backend that produces packages for the latest updates. Cool. Disabling privileged ports. Open a listener on ports 0 through 1023, I believe it is. Uh, either TCP or UDP. And, uh, or it says uh, 1024 and below. No longer require super user access. That could be a really nice feature for a lot of us out there. Instead of having to do a bunch of shenanigans to work with that stuff. We're just probably doing the wrong thing, which is pseudo that stuff and then running it right, bypassing all the security privilege uh, stuff. Um, not the greatest idea. A couple of new tools install. We've got Ghidra, Visual Studio Code, Cloud Brute, Dir Search, Ferex Buster, Paku, Parades, and Quark Engine. Really neat stuff. Some theme enhancements. This is all normal, random things. Uh, desktop wallpaper, login backgrounds. Then it gets into the Raspi images and NetHunter, Docker support, parallel support. And of course, what would an update be without various bug, fitch bug, fitches? bug fixes and patches? That's when you like to put fixes and patches into one word and we call them fitches. That's that's not right. <laughs> so fun stuff there. All right, let's get into the highlights. Like I said, Kaboxer. Really cool here. Basically, uh, what's happening is you've got some tools that are hard to support. Well, or they, they've got a lot of dependencies to them that could possibly break uh, when it comes to working with Kali. You can start messing up your system. It's real easy to do. Trust me, I've done that. Been there, done that. Got the T-shirt. Not this t-shirt. This is a t-shirt I got at B-Sides. My last conference before COVID. This was in Tampa. B-Sides. Oh, I miss conferences. They were so fun. I think they're making a comeback though. So I look forward to seeing you good folks at those conferences. Um, but this uh, is basically, it's going to take those hard to work with packages. It's going to throw it into a container. And now it allows us as the end user to basically just apt install whatever we like, but it does it all through containerization and we just get to use the tool and enjoy it. It seems seamless to us as the end user and we get to use all these tools. So really cool stuff there that's going on there, right? So it says right here, without repeating what's already been posted, this technology allows us to correctly package up programs that were previously difficult with items such as complex dependencies or legacy programs and libraries. 
like Python 2, Ryan old Python 2, uh, or outdated SSL TLS. A uh, couple of them that are already installed. So if you, you grab the large package, if you do like an ISO install, you're going to get Covenant installed in this way. It's going to be using Kaboxer Firefox Developer Edition. Like I said, Big GUI desktop application, Zen Map. It's got legacy libraries. You're going to get that functionality back. You're going to be able to work with it really well. And it's all done through containerization. It does mean that those containers, so if you install a simple package, it's going to be a kind of fat, going to be a big package, going to have some heft to it. Uh, so just be uh, mindful of disk space when working with Kaboxer. But really cool stuff. Uh, some Kali tweaks here. This is kind of, uh, from what I was reading about it, it's just really trying to make it easier for you to customize and work with Kali. Make it your own Kali Linux system and yeah, basically trying to make it to where you can more easily do some of those repetitive tasks that you probably are doing. Like meta packages, installing, removing groups of tools, which may not have been available when installing Kali if you did not use the installer image. Cool, that's awesome. Network repositories, so this is enabling or disabling bleeding edge and experimental uh, branches. Shell and prompt, this is probably one of my two things. This is actually really cool. Uh, switch between two or one line prompt. You might think, ah, that's kind of kind of lame thing. I mean, let me show you what it looks like real quick. Let me jump on a different desktop. Fire up the old uh, wonderful terminal emulator here. And you'll notice that I'm working with the two line version out of the gate, and I think that's the default for your system. So if I do an LS or whatever, you'll notice I kind of get that Kali kind of wraps down below. It gives me path and everything on the top line, the bottom line. I like this because it gives me a lot of real estate for output. Super great. Um, but that might not be your cup of tea. Do a control P, you'll notice changed ever so slightly. And now I'm on that single line. So maybe you come from a uh, old school Kali, or maybe that's your just cup of tea and you want your system to be the way you like it, you can easily do it. Control P, bing, back and forth. There it is. Enhance, enhance, enhance. So really cool, super simple. You can jump back and forth with that. Does other things as well, but I like that feature. Kind of neat. Um, also supposed to make it easier for you to run uh, virtualizations. Probably something to do with either integration with VMs or the virtualization software, things like VirtualBox, Player for VM VMware, Fusion, Workstation. Uh, but maybe it's like the, the VM tools kind of stuff. I, I'm not 100% on that. But there you go. Really cool. Uh, let's see here. What else do we need to know about here? All right. So now it's kind of getting into the detailed stuff. I want to jump down to... I'm going to do... Uh, Tool. Ooh, not that. Tools. New tools added. Yeah. Can I click that? Can it take me as an anchor tagged? No. Okay. Well, that's okay. I've got this. Booyah. Kaboxer. Dang. There we go. New tools in Kali. Ha <laughs> ha. That's how we roll. I like new tools. New tools are fun to play with because they usually bring along some extra functionality for us good folks out there trying to do this work that we love so much or enjoy it as a pastime. I like this. It would not be a color release if there were not any new tools added. So we've got cloud brew, which is a fine company infrastructure files and apps on the top cloud providers. That could be very useful. Dir search brute force directories and files and web servers. I saw this one was like, Oh, you know, I've been using GoBuster for a while. It works very well. I typically am very happy with it. But new stuff comes out and you might want to give it a shot. You never know. It might dethrone your favorite directory fuzzing tool. Um, so Dir search was something. And then I saw this Ferox Buster. Simple, fast, fast. I like fast. I like simple. Recursive content discovery. Actually kind of brought up that page. Here it is right here. It's basically their GitHub repo. Um, and what's cool is you can... Here's like a little demo of it. And it looks nice. I can't blow this up. I'm so sorry. That's not my, I would make this huge for you. But I'm getting a lot of really nice color coding and really well done outputs. I like what I'm seeing here. It looks very useful. This very well may 
kind of, it may dethrone Go Buster for me. Depending on its speed and capabilities, I might be going down that path. I did install it. I downloaded the virtual appliance. Uh, so I just grabbed the, um, the pre-built VM for the new version of Kali off their website instead of installing from an ISO to save some time. And a lot of the tools weren't installed. You need the large package, the large ISO, I believe, um, uh, to have all this stuff just ready to rock, to rock and roll. But I installed this. It was pretty, it was an app install. Ferox Buster. There you go. That helps if I actually completes the command. There you go. Ferox Buster. So you throw it a URL. It kind of throws this stuff. I'm just trying to give you a better um, dash U, I believe. Let's try that. Yeah. Or dash dash URL. Dash URL. You give it a URL, HTTP, slash, slash, uh, oh, no, no, no. I don't have anything going. There you go. And there you go. It's a very pretty output, right? And of course, you'd want to play around with the um, capabilities. Yeah, it could not connect because it doesn't do anything. But I like the way this output looks. It's very nice for me. Um, and I, like I said, depending on the speed capabilities, I might be jumping to this as a permanent solution for my directory of fuzzing needs as they were. I don't know why I turned into a Southern gentleman. All of a sudden I'm like Colonel Sanders. I'm like, these chickens are delicious and you must enjoy them. I use Ferox Oxide or Ferox Buster for my directory of fuzzing requirements. Um, yeah, I, lo I lose my mind from time to time. It is nice to you good folks out there get to watch that. Descent into madness as I do from time to time. All right. Uh, what else did we have? Any other thing I want to go to? Oh, yes. Uh, Visual Studio Code. That's going to be a part of your new release. This is an interesting one. Quark Engine. Android malware, malware scoring system. We got some Kubernetes penetration testing software with Parades. Paku's AWS exploitation framework. Yeah. Nice. Ghidra is now installed by default. Uh, that's for reverse engineering. That's that. I think it was a, was it the shadow brokers thing or anyway, I think it was an NSA tool that got leaked. Uh, great for doing reverse engineering stuff with. So really cool stuff in our new version here. I normally don't get too worked up about new versions of Kali, but Hey, it had some great new tools and things uh, available. Uh, so I thought it was interesting. So I downloaded it. I ran it. I want to I wanna play with it. I like their new philosophy of trying to be more of a stable environment. And so they're starting to implement things like, you know, hey, you got to run as a normal user. Oh, it did have that one last thing. Let's go back real quick. That was that privileged ports thing. Control F that. And uh, I'm just going to look for privileged ports. Privileged. There we go. Uh, no, that's unprivileged, but that's okay. I can go this way. There we go. The privileged ports. Disabling the privileged ports. This is an interesting thing. We see Kali is a desktop OS rather than a server. And these well-known privileged ports are usually reserved for server services, right? So this is port 80, 443, things of that nature. They don't want it to... They don't want you sudoing, right? We get it. It's quicker to run sudo and then the program. And if it utilizes that port, now that is running as roots. They don't want you running as root. They want you to, you know, do port forwarding or something. And that's kind of a pain. So now they just said, you know what? You just don't require privileged access to those ports anymore. Do your thing. Make it happy. And it can run in the context of a service account or something like that. Uh, so that's really cool. So with the switch from Kali's root to non-root user by default, rather than doing port forward from outside, there you go. If this is all like, what does that mean? Welcome to IT. There's a lot of interesting things for you to learn and understand, and that will catch you up. But for all, all of us that work and live with these things, that is a, a nice addition for us to not have to expose our Kali machines. And again, that's that paradigm shift away from it just being a, hey, I'm using it to do a pen test, and then I blow it away. Now, now I can kind of live in this world for much longer periods of time. It's meant to be updated. It's meant to be more secure and have security put in place. And us bypassing those systems does not help. So we're going to try to help us out with that stuff. Uh, the only other thing I think that was interesting off the top of my head is um, the panel up here at the top. 
you'll see a lot less stuff. You do have this little drop down here next to your terminal and you can open a, a root terminal, uh, which there you go. I now have an easy root terminal and you'll notice it's got the skull right there to let you know, hey, dangerous, it's all red. I live in a root world. I'm not afraid to run as root. I get the idea of behind it being dangerous. So, hey, force me into doing the right thing and um, that'll that'll keep my system safer. Well, there you go, ladies and gents. There's the, uh, the really quick and dirty of what's new inside the latest and greatest version of Kali that just dropped out this week, first week in June here. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Show me some love if you would, please, and thank you. Uh, don't forget to like and share with your friends and comments. Let's start talking. What do you like? Maybe you hate Kali and you're like, hey, this turned me around. I think that some great in uh, new additions and I'm, I'm going to grab a copy. And I'm going to start running Kali. Um, or maybe you're just like, I hate, I'm dumb, dumb with Kali. I'm a parrot person. I'm a black arch. I'm whatever. And here's X, Y, and Z reasons why those distros are way better than using Kali. Hey, let us know. Maybe people don't have any experience with those. And you could be the person that just flips that switch in their head and they go, you know what? I'm going to try that out. You're absolutely right. That does bother me about Kali. That is an issue. Or maybe you're a Kali fanboy, fangirl, as it very well may be. And you think it's the greatest. It's been around for a hot minute. It's got uh, a great following. But get that conversation going and it'll be a lot of fun for everybody and we can all learn from each other. That said, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.